Hello friends! Happy Saturday and welcome to another reading vlog. I wasn't gonna vlog this weekend um, but I am very excited because today or I guess yesterday things finally opened back up um, and I usually don't like go straight out but I did go on a picnic today. It's the first time hanging out with people other than my parents in a really really long time um, and I'm already all sweaty so I figured why not just head down to the bookstore, take a nice little walk, um, and if it's not too busy, I will pop my head into my local indie bookstore and see what they have. I don't even know if I'll buy anything, but I do have a $5 um, gift certificate that I got for my birthday um, from them. So I'm just gonna head down and see what they have in store. Just like have a peruse, have like some vibes. I am also gonna take my library card with me in case the library is still open. I did drive past a couple of libraries and they all have like huge lineups outside, um, which understandable. Um, but I'm gonna bring my library card in case there isn't too much of a line and I might head also to the library depending on the wait time, I guess. Um, but yeah, I will hopefully take you with me. I don't know if I'm allowed to film in the store. Um, I've never filmed in that store in particular. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Um, and yeah, I am actually reading sort of this weekend. Um, so I'm also excited to share with you what I am reading this weekend. Um, I'm currently about 80% of the way through um, a book called You Are Eating an Orange, You Are Naked. Um, and it is a piece of Chinese Canadian lit. Um, and I'm really enjoying it so far. It's kind of weird. It's written in second person, but I will probably finish it today and I will give you all my thoughts about the book um, after I finish. But it's definitely like not what I usually read, but I kind of like it. And I have heard it comped to like Haruki Murakami. Um, so I'm intrigued to maybe read something by Murakami. Um, I do actually own 1Q84, which I haven't actually finished reading. I started that book like seven or eight years ago um, and I just never finished reading it. Um, I got about a hundred pages in, um, but maybe I will read some Murakami. I don't know, who knows? Um, but anyway, I've talked long enough. I'm going to head out now before the shops close in about an hour and a half and I will see you when I next check in, I guess. Hello friends, I am back from my little excursion. I have showered, I'm back in my pajamas. I don't know why I said I wasn't sure if I was gonna buy anything. Of course I was gonna buy something. Um, <laughs> I didn't end up filming though cause I was gonna ask if I could film but like they were so busy and like there was a line outside so I didn't wanna be like a bother so I didn't bother asking and I felt too awkward to just kinda like film without asking. Um, so I didn't film. I also didn't stay long again because there was a line so I didn't wanna like overstay my welcome kind of thing and it was closing by the time I got in it was closing in less than an hour um so I wanted to make sure I was like in and out but I did get some pretty good deals um I found a book that I had my eyes on for a while um at the, in the discount bin and then I also picked up a book that I have also had my eyes on for a while um that just came out in paperback and because I had that gift certificate and I have 10% off regularly at this bookstore. Um, I just ended up getting a pretty good deal for these two books. Um, but quick plug to my local bookstore, Book City. If you're ever in Toronto and you're looking for a nice indie bookstore, they have a few locations. I really like them. Um, the staff are always really nice at my location, so. And they stock a pretty good selection of books. Um, I don't know if it's every location, but I know at my location, they have a pretty good selection of like Canadian lit all the time. Um, and they also uh, are pretty conscious, I feel, of like stocking, um, BIPOC authors, which I really appreciate. But anyway, the first book I picked up was How Much of These Hills is Gold. Um, I have had my eyes on this for a while. Um, this is a literary fiction, I believe. Might have some kind of like surrealist elements to it. I'm not 100% sure, but I know that it has a lot of conversations about like Chinese American immigrant life kind of situation. It's about like identity and race and and like family and I've just heard nothing but good things about this book um, and I've been dying to read this but like I said the hardcover obviously was like super expensive and I was like oh maybe I'll just like get it from the library but like I just love this cover so much. Uh, I will say the hardcover is obviously nicer because it was before this book got a lot of awards um, so it doesn't have like the annoying award stickers and the hardcover is like a matte metallic type finish which is really nice but I do really love this. I love like the tiger on it. I don't know. I just really like the look of this book and I actually think I might start this after I finish my other book that I mentioned um, today because this, these are kind of the books that I've been really into recently <laughs> or like that I've been intrigued by. Um, you guys all know I'm in a bit of like a fantasy slump. I'm really not feeling fantasy right now so I've been kind of feeling these like more pretentious slightly um, literary fictions. But the second book I picked up, I've had my eye on this book for a while. Um, you all know I'm trying to read more translated literature, but 
not doing too well, but this was on my like list of translated books to read, and that is The Memory Police. Um, this is a Japanese translated piece of work. I don't actually remember what the blurb for this book is. I just know that I thought it was very intriguing when I heard about it. Um, and I do feel like this is one of the more kind of like popular um, translated Japanese pieces of fiction. I don't know. Um, but I found this in the discount bin and I was like, this mint condition hardcover in the discount bin, I gotta get it. I gotta get it. Granted, I don't love hardcovers, but when they're like small hardcovers like these, I kind of love it. And also this cover is stunning. I don't know what it is about this cover. It's just stunning. Um, but yeah, all I know about it really is that it's kind of a um, like dystopian type of book. I don't know. I've heard really good things about this book. I have heard the ending of this book isn't is a little controversial. Like some a lot of people don't like the ending, but I I have come to realize that I am not the most traditional when it comes to endings. Like I really like open endings. I really like unconventional endings. Um, so I'm hoping I will really like this. Um, this is also another book that I'm possibly gonna read soon. Ooh, the naked hardback is so nice. Like it's all blue, but like it has like the gold. I don't know. I think it's really nice. Anyway, I'm really happy with kind of like the mini haul that I have here. Um, both books that I've had my eye on for a while um, and definitely both books that I feel like reflect what I'm currently in the mood for. Um, so I'm very, very excited. Um, I'm going to go finish um, the book that I've been reading. I will check in either later tonight or tomorrow morning and let you know what I think of that book. Um, I know I haven't really talked about it much, but it's such a short book. It's only about 170 pages. I just feel like if I talk about it now, I'll have nothing else to say now that I'm so close to the end. So I'm just going to give you my final thoughts on that, as well as if I start one of these two books tonight or another book, I will let you know as well. Good morning, friends. Happy Sunday. Um, it is currently like 10 o'clock in the morning um and longtime viewers of this channel will know normally on Sundays I go to my parents house not today I'm just feeling really tired and like burnt out and just need some alone time um and yeah so today my plan is just to read and play some video games <laughs> uh I recently got a switch and I'm addicted and I <laughs> I also recently got um Fire Emblem Warriors to play <laughs> and I bought it initially because I was like oh it'll be a good game to play while I listen to audiobooks and just like mindlessly hack away at, at people um but I've kind of gotten addicted to playing it like with full sound effects and everything so that's not gonna be happening <laughs> um so I'm just gonna be playing that for a little bit today um I say a little bit probably quite some time. Um, but I did finish my book yesterday. Um, it's called You Are Eating an Orange, You Are Naked. Um, it's an interesting book. Um, it's one of those books that I was kind of like, it was on my radar because it's Canadian lit. Um, and also it's just like, it's the premise sounded interesting. And I think it's, it's a weird book. I, I don't know if it's a novella or a novel. Um, the length is very short. It is slightly longer than your typical novella, though. It is kind of the around the length, it's only like slightly longer, I'd say, than like Black Tides of Heaven, which is on like the longer side of a novella as well. The premise of this book, I don't even know how to explain this, but it's basically a literary fiction um, in which you are following a main character. Actually, the main characters are nameless. You don't actually know the names of the main characters, which almost makes me wonder, um, if it's semi-autobiographical um, in a way. I don't know. I, I actually have no idea because I don't know enough about the author um, to know. So the story is told primarily from the perspective uh, of a Chinese Canadian man. Um, he lives in Toronto, but he was he grew up in Hong Kong. Um, and he is talking to his girlfriend at the time. And she is Japanese um, and lived moved to Canada uh, later on. Um, and that's how they met. Like, I think they met in, like, university or something. I don't really know. Um, but the story is very weird. Um, first of all, the whole book is told in second person, so I think if, like, you don't like second person, uh, it's probably not for you. For me, the narrative choice worked really well, especially later on in the book. I don't want to, like, ex like, spoil why, but I think the narrative choice is very well done here. I really liked it. I really liked 
I actually really like this book. I didn't even say I really enjoyed this book. Um, I ended up giving it a four stars, which I actually had kind of hesitated to give it a four star because I feel like while I really enjoyed it, I do feel like a lot of the metaphors went over my head. I do feel like it's a little, it's, it's like, a, it's a book that is slightly on the more pretentious side. Um, there's a lot of things that I just didn't understand, but I did fundamentally really enjoy this book. This book gave me a lot of feelings of nostalgia because this whole book is told in kind of like anecdotes and like snippets of like this man's life. Um, and, and it's snippets into his relationship with this woman. And a lot of it is like just conversations between them. And a lot of it is also him telling her stories, um, traditional folk tales, movies he's seen, books he's read, just telling her stories all the time. Um, and I really like that aspect. I, I, I mean, I'm a sucker for kind of like a story within a story. And like, I don't know, the way that he tells her stories, it kind of gives like very folktale vibes. It, it, the, it makes the book feel very whimsical, despite it being so pretentious, <laughs> if that makes sense. It, it, it also follows them on their travels. So like at the beginning of the book, they are they they travel to Hong Kong um, and they're in Macau. And I just like, it just brought back so many like feelings of nostalgia. And also like, even in like the non-traveling parts, they're in Toronto and like, it's just... I don't know. I, I really liked the book in that way. I felt very immersed in, in their story. And also I think the second person narrative helps with that. Like it helps you immerse yourself in that story. And I think it also helps that like I've been to the places that they talk about. So I could like very vividly picture those places. And I don't know if that's partially the writing, but also the nostalgia, probably a combination of both. But I, I really thought this book was really well written. I, I thought the writing was very engaging. Like I read it in two sittings basically um and I thought the writing was very addictive and I think also because like this book is the first book in a really long time that I have not struggled to read physically only like I really just like flew through this book I was really addicted to it um I started it on Thursday night I believe and then on Friday at work like I was like thinking about this book at time moments during the day and I just wanted to read it and I think I read like I read some during lunch as well because like I just really wanted to read this book and even though I didn't hi Kava <laughs> even though I didn't understand a lot of the metaphors that were used and basically this whole book is like a, a sling of metaphors even though I didn't understand a lot of the metaphors I still feel like I really enjoyed the book I don't know I gave it four stars makes mainly based on like feeling um, more so than like objectively I do think objectively it's a good book I just don't think it's gonna be for everyone again because it's in second person it's very in, in a way it's very choppy because it is like so anecdotal and it's just like snippets of this person's life like in a similar way to like Luster by Raven Leilani, I think that is also like a very like snippets of someone's life, but that one almost feels more linear and more logical. Like the snippets are not as like detached from each other. Whereas here, because the, the snippets of this person's life is also interspersed with like stories and like folk tales and stuff, it almost feels a little bit more non-linear in the way that it's told despite kind of the main events being semi-linear, albeit with like tons of time gaps in between. But yeah, I, I really liked it. I think it's really interesting. I think if you like kind of more experimental fiction, if you like literary fiction, if you like those kind of like stories that are a little bit more like anecdotal, um, if you, I, to be honest, I think if you like luster, like that style of storytelling, I think you would like this. It's very similar in the way that it's like, you know, there's just like it's like almost like vignettes of like and scenes from someone's life um just kind of pieced together I don't know that's that's kind of the vibe I got in terms of the writing style in Luster which I I really like Luster as well actually now that I think about it it's definitely one of those books that I already know that I want to reread um whether or not I'll buy a physical copy I'm not sure hi Kava anyway um, and, and then I also started How Much of These Hills is Gold, um, and I am only two chapters in, so I'm not really that far in, and I'm enjoying it so far, like, I don't, I don't think I'm far enough in to tell what it is. I will say, I did not realize this was a western. <laughs> I thought this was just gonna be, like, a straight-up literary fiction, but this is, like, this is a western, um, and it takes place kind of around the, like, California Gold Rush era, um, that's kind of what's implied in this book. The year is, like, XX62, like, it's not specified when, but, like, I don't know, when was, the Gold Rush was, like, the 1850s-ish, wasn't it? Something like that? Um, so, you know, it's pretty much implied that this is around the time of the California Gold Rush. Um, and it's, 
a very interesting book. I will say that um, already from the beginning. Um, you start off the book with these two siblings um, and their father has just died. We already know from the beginning of the book that their mother is gone. Um, gone where whether she's passed away or she just like left them we don't know yet um but at the very beginning of the book their father dies like literally in the first sentence um <laughs> so it's not a spoiler um and these two siblings have now been orphaned in a world that they're very much not welcome in um their parents were chinese immigrants uh who came over to america for the gold rush um and it's very interesting i kind of wish i knew more about westerns and like tropes in westerns because i do wonder how this book kind of plays on those tropes and like plays into them but also like subverts them i'm very interested in that um but i'm just not i'm not the person for that i'm not well versed in westerns at all i don't know i can't remember the last time i re read a western have i ever read a western i don't think so um but this is definitely very interesting i have looked up some reviews online already <laughs> um and I can see why people hate it. Uh, the writing style is very different. I can see it being very polarizing. I feel like you'll either love it or you'll hate it. I don't know where I personally lean yet in terms of whether I like the writing style or not. It's very like choppy. Um, there's not a lot of use of pronouns and that's actually a deliberate choice. I actually looked it up because I at first kind of thought maybe the sentence structure was trying to kind of almost mimic like Chinese sentence structure because I do feel like um, Chinese sentence structure is very different from like English sentence structure so I kind of felt that way and I wanted to see if the author actually intended to do it that way or whether or whether or not I was just like reading way too much into it so I started looking at interviews it actually was a deliberate choice on the author's part not particularly for the reason that I thought it was um but actually she mentioned that um, it was a del deliberate choice because the narrator is Lucy, one of the characters, and Sam, the other sibling, is actually gender non-conforming. Um, and Lucy is actually, because she's the narrator, um, and they're both children, she's, she's, Lucy is a very unreliable narrator. She, she doesn't know a lot about the world because she's only 12 years old. She does not know for sure at the point where I'm in, like, two chapters in, um, what Sam's, uh, gender identity is. Um, and so she, in the narrative, the way that she speaks, she very much avoids using gendered pronouns and words. There are, of course, moments, um, you know, kind of the most notable no moment where she does use she, her pronouns and also refers to Sam as her sister is kind of the moment where it is revealed that that Sam is gender nonconforming. That's pretty early on. Um, but I remember reading that part and I was like, wait, let me go back. And I went back to the beginning and I went to ev through every single reference of Sam and it, gendered pronouns were never used for Sam. And I thought that was a very interesting deliberate choice in, in terms of the narrative. And it definitely makes the writing style and the narrative choice very interesting because you're not seeing a lot of pronouns being used. And so the wording can feel a little jarring at times. Um, I think there's also some stylistic choices obviously weaved into that. I will say I read the first chapter just physically and I found the writing style very jarring and I was like I don't know if I like this writing style but chapter two I did uh, my library does have the audiobook so I did get the audiobook and I have been I read the second chapter kind of like hybrid reading it and I loved it so much more. Um, I think a it makes it makes you appreciate the writing style because I think the writing style the choppiness of it, it almost gives it a, a sort of rhythm to it. And I think the audiobook narrator does a really good job of reflecting that. I don't know. I don't, I haven't read enough of this book to say, but I, I think it is very interesting. Um, and yeah, it's just the, the story of these two orphans that, that now need to learn how to survive in a world that is designed to be against them. Um, and I'm excited to read this. I'm probably going to read um, this today. And like I said, I'm going to be playing my video games. But yeah, that is it for now. I will check in later if I have any updates. Hello friends! Happy Monday! Um, I didn't update you yesterday because, surprise surprise, I have not read much. I read a little bit, okay. So I read up to the end of part one of How Much of These Hills is Gold. I still feel kind of the same way about it. I'm fairly 
ambivalent in terms of emotion. Actually, I don't know. I don't know how to explain how I feel about this book. I didn't realize this was a Western going into it, and I don't feel like Westerns are my cup of tea. I'll be honest. However, um, there are definitely like sentences and like moments in this book that like really jump out at me and that like hit me very hard emotionally. And so I do kind of like this book because of that. Um, that being said, <laughs> Uh, I'm just in general struggling in, in like life, obviously. Um, but also like I found it hard with like most books I've read recently, like in the past like couple of months to like focus on the book for more than like one or two reading sessions. So like once I put the book down, like I have no desire to pick it back up, which is why I've been picking up more like shorter fiction so that I can just like read it all in like one go kind of thing. I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with me. Basically yesterday I read this for like maybe an hour, not even, maybe like half an hour. And then I ended up playing Fire Emblem Warriors for the entire afternoon. Um, and then in the evening, I actually went back to Foundry Side. I read maybe like 20 pages of this, not even, um, because I wanted to read, but I also wanted to listen to music. Um, so obviously because I'm doing this via audio as well, like doing a hybrid read, I wasn't reading this um, in the evening. So I read a little bit of this, but honestly just went back to lying in bed and listening to music and browsing the internet because I'm a schlub. But I do kind of want to read this because I, oh, I have like less than 200 pages left and I kind of just want to finish this book at this point because it's been on my currently reading for so long. I am liking this book. I am not loving it. I think I like the concept of the world. I have issues with the pacing quite a bit and it's actually not so much that it is too slow. It is actually, I actually almost find it a little too fast paced. Or it's not that it's, I don't know, it's not that it's fast paced, but like, I mean, it is. It's not that it's like so fast paced that like you don't know what's going on, but at the same time, I feel like there's no breathing room. Like the pacing in this is very much like constant. That's what it is. It's very constant and there's no like downtime to really like get to know the characters, I feel. But I feel like if you are a plot based reader, you would really like this. Um, I do like the world. I like the magic system. It is like sort of like coding, but not really. Um, I think more so the kind of problem solving aspects are very interesting and very like similar um, to like solving edge cases and like using kind of programmatic logic, which I think is kind of cool. But I also fundamentally, I just like don't love the characters. There's one character that I love, um, Gregor, and I think it's because he reminds me a lot of Javert as a character. Um, he's not a huge character though. Like I feel like this book really is about our main character, Sansha. Kava, please. Um, and I don't love Sansha. I think she's an okay protagonist. I just don't get, feel like we get to know her very well. And again, I think that's part partly because of the pacing. Um, I know we get a sapphic relationship, but like I'm 200, less than 200 pages from the end. And I, I don't, I don't see it. Like I know who it's with. Like there's only one other character it could possibly be with, but I don't, I don't see it. I don't see it. And again, I think that's because the other character has had like no development. Like you, I don't feel like I really know her as a character. So like, I just don't see, I don't see a relationship because I don't know who they are as people. You know what I'm saying? I will check in with you once I have made some sort of progress on either of these. Um, probably tomorrow at this point, maybe Wednesday. I don't know. I don't even know how long my vlogs are going on for anymore. Um, because I read so slowly. Um, but Anyway, I've babbled on long enough. I will check in with you guys um, once I have some updates. Hello friends, happy Tuesday. Um, it is currently like 9.30 um, and I just finished Foundry Side by Robert Jackson Bennett. Um, what to say about this book? I actually realized I never actually even gave a synopsis of this book. Um, I feel like it's quite popular so I feel like most people already know what it's about. But basically if you don't know what it's about it is the first book in an epic fantasy series I believe. I think it's a trilogy? I'm not sure actually. Um, but basically we follow our main character Sansha. She is a thief um, and she basically at the very beginning of the book th this book starts off with her in the middle of like a heist kind of situation and she basically um steals this ancient magical artifact um and it sets off a series of events because like all these really 
rich, important, evil people are now trying to find her and come for her because she has this thing. Um, and that's kind of all I'll say about it. Um, it's a very interesting world in which the magic system is something called scribing. Um, and so you can, it's almost like technology in that people alter reality by giving inanimate objects commands and telling them to do things in ways that feel like they defy reality, but actually are just like kind of twisting reality um, and almost like convincing objects to behave in a certain way. So it's really, it is kind of interesting. I ended up landing on a three stars for this. Um, I don't think it's a bad book by any means. I think it's good. I just think it's not really like my cup of tea per se. I think it's very, very um, plot focused. And I think I already mentioned this, but I have some issues with the pacing. Um, in a way that I think a lot of people will actually like the pacing. It's very, very fast paced. It's very action packed. And I think for most people, I think they would like it. I think a lot of people would like this book a lot. I think for me though, I felt like the the plot and the pacing um, and the, the the action came at the expense of like character development and more so than individual character development. I felt like it came at the expense of like the development of the relationships between the characters. So much so that by the end of the book, like I felt like for the first like third of the book, I, I liked the characters. I thought they were given really endearing and charming intros. Um, but I felt like they never really progressed beyond that. And that's kind of my issue with the characters. Um, and I feel like more so than that, like I said, the relationships between the characters, I, I wasn't buying it. Like I wasn't buying anyone's relationships to the point where by the end, like, certain things happened and certain characters said they felt a certain way about other characters um and like things happening to others characters and i just i didn't buy it i was like you, you hardly have a relationship with this person from my perspective granted i guess take this with a grain of salt because it did take me a really long time to read this so there's maybe like details i've forgotten but like i'm usually pretty good about reading books and like putting down books and then picking them back up so i don't think that was an issue here um in terms of that um, kind of thing. But yeah, I just, uh, I didn't love the character development in this. Um, but again, I think for most people, if you, and especially if you prefer like more plot heavy books, I think you would really like this. I think the plot is pretty tight. Um, I do think the last like 50 pages or so were way too rushed. And I kind of wish that was like spaced out a little bit more. I thought this book could have been just a touch longer to kind of let the ending have its like moment. I felt like it was a little anticlimactic because of that. Um, but other than that, I thought the, t the plot was very tight. I thought there were really good twists and turns towards the end. But yeah, all in all, I thought this was just really fun and entertaining while I read it. It's a bit of a mindless read. Um, it kind of reminds me actually in a, in a lot of ways and Interestingly, I'm looking at the back and Brandon Sanderson has blurbed this book, but in a lot of ways, this actually reminds me of a Brandon Sanderson book in the sense that like um, the writing style is, they're both very similar and that they're very straightforward. There's like no frills to it. Um, I feel like the narrative choices are also very similar. And in terms of like the magic system, I feel like Brandon Sanderson is known for having like more hard magic systems. And this is definitely like a harder magic system as well. Um, the in, and, 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 and also like a very original and creative magic system, which I feel like Brandon Sanderson is also known for. And also just like the overall vibes really give me Brando Sando vibes. And in the same vein, I feel like I've always said Brando Sando books for me are like very easy, mindless reads. And I feel the same way about this one as well. Um, so I think if you're a fan of Brandon Sanderson books, I think you would really like this one. I really do. It's a solid book. It's just not one that's going to be like sticking with me for a long time I feel I mean I might eat my words in the future who knows I just don't feel like I will like find myself thinking about this book or these characters like anytime soon personally um that's just how I feel about it <laughs> I'm glad I just like finally read something like a fantasy book um physically like it's been a while it's been a, I mean it's been a while since I read fantasy in general to be honest um but what else I haven't made any more progress on um how much of these hills is gold um how much of these hills are gold is gold i don't know um but i'm actually i think i'm gonna end the vlog here just because so the nintendo eShop had like a huge sale today so i bought three new games for my switch <laughs> um so i don't see myself reading anything for the next few days so i'm just gonna end the vlog here because i'm a clown um do i even what is booktube
what is this channel anymore? I don't know. Um, I do apologize for the lack of like quality content recently. Um, I do have a bunch of videos planned. I just have not had the chance to like sit down and film them. Um, but hopefully I will soon. Uh, I do apologize. But yeah, that is like my quick little two second life update. Um, but yes, hopefully I will sit down this coming weekend and film something for you guys. Anyway, that is it for this vlog. If you stuck around till the end, thank you so much. As always, I super, super appreciate it. And if you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment down below. Let me know if you have um, read any of the books that I've read or just leave me a key emoji. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you wanna see more from me. And that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.